Stugatz, as the shipping container files in, you and I just had a conversation where you shared, uh, I'm going to say news with me, information with me that I, never mind the audience, I don't think the shipping container has any idea uh, about the news you have to share. What do you think the reaction is going to be in there without telling the people too much about what's going on? Um, I think they'll be surprised. I think they'll be happy. Um, it is news. It's news to our audience. It's news to within our industry. Uh, but I do think the shipping container is going to be surprised. So that's the best I could say. All right. Surprised. Very te- surprised. That's a tease. Right. All yes. right. Let's get started here. I not only want to start by sharing a bit of information with the shipping container, I also want to ask the shipping container some follow-up questions about how I'm supposed to feel about the last couple of weeks that result in the information I'm about to put in front of you, which is (laughs) that Stugatz was very close to going to WFAN, like super close. And so, not uh, an April Fool's joke, by the uh, way. Right. Yes. So when th- when this came across, uh, Amin mentioned this to me when I came back from Texas, and I had been talking to you privately uh, about some of this stuff, but I didn't know what was public. And so Amin explained to me that our audience was getting rattled and stuff because of an April Fool's Day joke that I knew to be kind of true. <laughs> like it wasn't uh, it wasn't a joke. Like right. I I when it was reported, it, it was reported as ha ha. I've got. So Sources, Stugat's going to WFAN, and what do you want the people to know, or what do you want to tell them about everything that happened with you here? Because it's kind of a dream job for Stugat's, I would say, that he was offered. Uh, WFAN, I've said this a number of times, um, is the reason I got into this industry. Listening to that station uh, as a kid growing up on Long Island in New York, Uh, That's the reason I decided, listening to Mike and Chris, Mike and the Mad Dog, that's the reason I decided to get into this industry. Simply by listening to that radio station and wanting to do what it is those guys were doing uh, as I was listening. And so a few weeks ago, now I always imagined if I ever went there at this stage of my career, I would go there as a host. That was not the position that was offered to me. The position that was offered to me, that I have turned down, by the way, um, was to run the entire station, was to be the program director. They've had two. I would have been the third uh, to be the program director at WFAM. Uh, You and I spoke about it. I gave it a lot of thought. Uh, Times have changed in our industry. That job paid a lot more than it does today. (laughs) (laughs) And at the end of the day... I decided to stay in large part because of two things. One, Boomer Esiason refused to take a pay cut. I mean, that's number one. And number (laughs) two is... You've gotten awfully used to me taking the pay cuts. Well, you, yeah, you, you can't yeah. expect people. You can't expect in the other Listen, places. Listen, when Boomer said no, I was going to go to you and ask you to take another <laughs> one here and just pay me to be the PD at WFAN. <laughs> that didn't work out. We never got there. Um... But Boomer didn't take a pay cut. And then as I'm sitting there, and I got to tell you, the people at WFAM were great. They were patient. Uh, There was enthusiasm on both sides. They were very professional. I 
pat myself on the back. You were very professional. Was also very professional. Oh, get out of here. I covered all my bases. I told Dan, man. Well, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I told Skipper. Hold on a second. Yes. That's the limit to your profession. Yes, but wait. Yes. But wait, 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 wait. I need to. I'm not done. Okay. I, no, no. I want to hear everything you have to say here, as does the crew, I'm sure. I'm just going to tell people that when you say you handled it with maximum professionalism, the text I got from you. Low saying, bar, Dan. The text I got from you. Well, but I don't think you cleared the low bar because of what I'm about to say. You tripped um, on the bar? I, hmm. I'm pretty sure the bar hit Stumbled. him in the face because oh, of what I'm about to say. You tell me if this is handling it with maximum professionalism. Oh, boy. He texted me saying, hey, Dan, just wanted you to know first. Didn't want you to hear it from anyone else. I'm talking to FAN. After I'd already gotten dozens of calls because uh, that morning on FAN, they were already talking about it. Geo. I mean, that guy. I mean, seriously, I was on vacation. You were on vacation. He blew up my vacation. It was ridiculous. Suddenly, you know, Neil Best is calling me and Ryan Glass Spiegel. I mean, enough. I was on vacation and you were on vacation. So I didn't want to call you. I didn't want to bother you. The other reason I did take it is I sat down. I'm thinking about this. I'm going over the positives, the negatives. My wife loves it down here. She loves the life that we have down here. But Dan, it really got down to this. Boomer not taking a pay cut. And I didn't trust myself to not fire the people whose job I wanted at WFAN. <laughs> and state income tax. We should clarify for the audience this is not a bit right no it's this not is no, no this is no, real no this yeah. is i think this is as close as stugatz has ever come to leaving here this is a dream job for him and he would have look i've seen his work in this area i saw it 30 years ago he would have absolutely installed himself in one of the positions and replaced the host there's no way he was going to be walking around a sports radio station and not talking into the microphones like <laughs> he, that was going to happen <laughs> It is so weird to continuously find out important information about the two of you on our live show. Huh. We should probably talk about professional. That's how we do it, though. It is I mean, a weird place to work. Right. That's not weird. We're being real. We keep it being real. Being real, man. man. We wear our heart on our sleeve. My boy said he almost left, and he chose to stay. That's a win for us. Oh, no. That's, we that's great, dude. Ourselves yeah. Well, chose to stay. I don't know if that's, you it's know. It's Gatson and Dan's defense. I, I had also heard about this. This was not a very well-kept secret. No, no. It's, it wasn't. Geo. I mean, that and, guy. And that April Fool's joke. Regardless. The, I the, shouldn't have done that. The idea of Stu Goss. I was so mad at you. I know. Being in a position to try and save sports radio. <laughs> because there are very few markets where any of this stuff is going to be able to stand up now that People can get their own programming whenever they want at their own time. And it doesn't have to be when you're driving around in the car with a station dictating the terms on how you get your entertainment. Now that all of this is changing, New York is one of the few places. And I don't know that sports radio will ever die in New York. But it's one of the it few, won't, one, one of the few places. Well, but correct me if I'm wrong. But isn't uh, WFAN's uh, lead ownership group in all sorts of financial trouble? Uh, is it Odyssey? Uh, I don't. Odyssey know. Odyssey owns it. Used to be Intercom. They filed for bankruptcy not too long ago. So yeah, but WFAN will be the, fine. I, I think the industry is in in disrepair and is an antiquated model. And it's still. I've said this before. The way that it works. I don't know how much it's changed over the last couple of years i imagine a great deal but when we left espn some of the calculations that we were doing is that uh radio and advertising still had 75 percent of the market and podcasts still had a, you know much lower than that obviously i don't know if it was 25 percent or a little bit less than that but that all of that is going to flip obviously over the next 10 years as and as consumption habits change. Uh, it's a great station. It will continue forever, that station. It's a part of New York. It really is. It's a massive brand in New York. And it is the closest I've come to leaving this show. And Dan knows this. And Dan was actually great. He was happy for me. And I appreciate that because he knows how much that position and that station means to me and that market means to me. And so to have the opportunity, it didn't work out. And perhaps we'll work something out down the road. Uh, because I, I do think for me, a perfect ending to my career would be 
at WFAN. But there were some things that I had to factor in. The 20th anniversary, our 20th anniversary is coming up in September. That means a lot to you. It means a lot to me. People are, I, I can feel the shipping container rolling their eyes. But it, I'm not rolling my eyes at good. all, brother. Like, beautiful. Brother, we all have dreams and hopes. You grew up knowing that station. You grew up with that on your mind. And for that to be an option for you, brother, that's such a big blessing. So I commend you and I congratulate you. Congratulate you for even having that option, bro. I love you, Juju. Yes, Why sir. would I roll my eyes? I've been here for 18 of those 20. <laughs> I don't know. I don't I don't know that there is another job there that, isn't, that really. Stugatz would take that would be reasonably, like obviously there are jobs in the media, but jobs that he could actually get at that I don't know that there's another one that would be more interesting to It him. was really flattering. It felt good to be offered that job, to have them trust me, potentially trust me as someone who would run that station. And really the intriguing part about it was – to be able to put my imprint on the next 20 years of WFAN, having listened to that station, and again, that station uh, being the driving force to getting me into this business, uh, that would have been fun. That would have been nice to uh, put my imprint on it for the next 20 years. It didn't work out. I'm good with it. Chris Oliveira was great at Odyssey and WFAN. He was fantastic. He is very loyal to his staff because Lord knows I tried to get all their jobs. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, did I? Talk? Is that the guy I talked to? Yeah, Chris Oliveira. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. This is how professional I was. I mean, I called Dan, we had conversations, and then I badgered him to call this guy Chris. Right. And then I called him. This is another part that was slightly less than professional. <laughs> what? I called that guy, and he then said, because all that was needed at that point was sort of the blessing of, like, yes, I'd be thrilled for Stugatz. It would not be a messy ending at all. I would be very happy that he would have the job of his dreams. Uh, but while I was talking to that person, it dawned on me that the call I'm making is asking for him to fire somebody else who's <laughs> under contract. And so I'm, I'm like really mortified, right? Because I'm like, yes, I'll make that call, but I can't have you, I can, no, I'm not gonna make a hit. I'm not gonna put a hit out on a New York, uh, New York sports radio person. I just wanted you to call. I wasn't going for an on-air position. This was the position. Uh, communication is not a strong for me. Um, but but all I, Cotta, your ass is on the line if Stugatz gets the program director job. Well, no, 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 because Chris Oliveira was very loyal to his staff. All those shows are doing great. They're all top three men, 25, 54. The morning show has the highest ratings uh, that that station has ever seen, and that includes shows with Don Imus. So they're doing great. They're doing fine. Wow. <laughs> it it, it, it would have been fun. Uh, it didn't work out. Again, there were things here. Um, that were important to both me and Dan and to Metal Ark and to DraftKings. Uh, the 20th anniversary is a big deal to me and Dan. It, it really is. So. I want to get back to this in a second. With that said, if they came up about another $500,000, yeah, I would have taken I, it. I assume I mean, that they didn't come through with the money. I did assume that that was the chief negotiating force there. <laughs> uh, Lucy, do you know who Don Imus is? No. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh. I would love to introduce you to Don Imus because we love women's sports. He called a group of basketball-playing women nappy-headed H-word, and that will never stand. Don Imus is a piece of crap for that. I will never forgive him for that. It was the Rutgers women's basketball yes. team, right? Exactly, yep. bro. Who the heck, boy? That's right. Doesn't That's... seem like my type of guy, so I'm okay that I didn't know him. I'd He's like to keep it that way. Right. He's also dead. Yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. He was also Spoiler alert. in New York. The biggest thing outside of Howard Stern at the time that radio was growing into the monster thing that it is. When Stugat says that they have bigger ratings now than even in the days of Don Imus, it's because Don Imus was one of the original shock jocks who did uh, that. I, w I think that story, Juju, might be, to a great many people in our audience and elsewhere, the introduction to women's basketball, where the that scandal and For that, a lot of people. that controversy is Don Imus. You know, Don Imus was talking about Rutgers women's basketball, which isn't something that was being discussed very much, and that might have been the introduction. A guy who looks like Don Imus. Here, wait a minute. Video. Since Lucy hasn't seen this, I just want to see her face when we put on the camera. Can you get the least flattering possible photo towards the end of the late yes. Don Imus? Please find. Uh, yes. No, rest no. in peace. No. 
Uh, no, well, never mind. Okay. No, no, no. All right. Rest in protest. That's it. We're wishing him it. I, you know, I don't know whether it's a Juju roots for eternal damnation. After death, I'm not well, sure. I, I, I wish his family <laughs> health, wealth, and strength. I do not mean any disrespect to the dead. Condolences. That was just a terrible move by yes. a, a very popular radio host. That is correct. It ended his career, and it is. It, man, this is the worst. That man is dead, and it's the only thing some people remember about him when he did have a career before that that was pioneering. But, Lucy, there he is, the late, great Don <laughs> Imus. I could have guessed he said that. <laughs> if you showed me the picture, I'd be like, yeah, he probably said what, that. America, why are you so stupid that you're surprised by what's happening in 2024 with people who look like that? Why are you surprised? Pioneer. I don't know if I should say this, but does look, he kind of look like Paul McCartney? Yes. A little bit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, not in that picture. I think it was the hair. Yeah. Uh, the cowboy hat helps. Uh, regardless, uh, it, you're right, Juju, uh, that that was the starting point on everything we've seen that moves you to tears in 2024 when Lucy's Iowa Hawkeyes get crushed you seem better today lucy they didn't get crushed i don't like that well your heart got crushed oh yeah my right. heart got crushed yeah. Okay. yeah your feelings your emotions your life yeah yeah pretty much yep i'm feeling really good but Stu staying so everything's on the mint yeah. uh, this is the news she needed this week to keep her going i am told we have a video from you four days after the championship that is ready to be leashed uh, unleashed on the american people uh, but I believe it was done two days ago, but we're going to get to that later. That's what they call in the industry a tease. Stu, yes. you would need to know that for your new job. <laughs> Professional. I turned it down. Yes, he did turn it down. I, I won't believe it until I see it. We did the math, and Lucy was nine years old when the Don Imus controversy happened. Wow. So, you know. Man, we were, zero. we were zero when Harriet Tubman was out here, but she's just as important. So it don't matter what age you are. <laughs> Let's get over this age stuff, man. Come on. <laughs> I did not have a Harriet Tubman reference here <laughs> in relation Tubbs. to Don Ives. 15 minutes Tubbs. of the show. Uh, but just to put a, a bow on this, Stu Gatz, what is it that you would like uh, the people to know without, yes? Uh, <laughs> let's put it to the poll. Who's more important? Don Imus or Harriet Tubman? That's a good one. No, Dan, I'm sorry. You were asking a question. Uh, Tashay was in my ear, and I couldn't hear what the question was. That's That that was the problem. So please ask again. Put uh, a bow on this. Is, yes, is I was asking you to please uh, tell the audience or whomever else, without repeating the stuff you said about you know how classy FAN was, just what you would want them to know about what I believe to be in 20 years – uh, the most that you've ever considered uh, leaving what we're doing here for something. Uh, there are not many things. There are not. I will tell the audience that the media is shaking. Like the entire industry, and much of it is being kept alive by the gambling industry. When you've got Disney trying to figure out how to just put podcasts on ESPN2 because, and you've got everybody letting people go, the media is shifting. There are not a lot of jobs that have stability. When Stugatz talks about this job in this station, I'm telling him, yeah, but isn't everything above them shaky? Because everything's shaking everywhere in media. For you to have what I believe to be a chance at one of the few jobs that would give you the ending you wanted, the... The, the stability you'd want, the geography you'd want as someone who grew up there and now has, um, you know, kids who are traveling all over the place. Yes. I, I understood completely that that would be a job that would make you happy. But I also understood something else. And I didn't ask that you this. I'll ask you just publicly. It also seemed like a job that would be a whole hell of a lot of work. It doesn't seem like you're interested in doing at this point in your career. It's a nine to five or Dan. Like Monday through Friday. Wearing a tie and meeting salespeople. Like, I'm not sure. Like, it's a lot. It's a full-time job. I will tell you, I spoke to uh, Spike Eskin, who is the current program director at uh, WFAN. What does he work? 60-hour weeks? 80-hour weeks? Yeah, and he's leaving to go to WIP as a host. And I spoke to him because he wanted to give me the day in the life of the program director at WFAN. And Spike's job was to sell me. Dan, it was to sell me on trying to take the job. I can tell you, when I hung up with Spike Eskin, I wanted the job less. I mean, he sounded like he had been through one, like he had ran a marathon. He was out of breath. He was stuck in traffic in the Holland Tunnel. I'm like, Spike, you're supposed to be selling me on this thing. 
I mean, I mean, there are like five program directors in America right now trying to keep the industry alive. Time to check my social media, y'all. We have a new segment, Dano, we where do? the fans of the show can chime in right now and give their opinion of what's going on. Right now. Right now. Huh? Benjamin Rose on, on uh, YouTube says, Stu got showing up to a time and a place and on time is already unbelievable. So he's right. The fans don't believe you had this opportunity, brother. <laughs> They're not. They think he's lying. They, they think they, he's lying. They don't believe that he was offered this job for real, and that somebody in the year 2024 of our Lord has decided during an election year, one of the craziest of our lifetime, to give Stugatz power at one of the big stations in the United States that has the le- biggest that legitimately gets heard in one of the many cities in America that's totally falling apart while everyone moves here to my gun toting <laughs> state. Whoa, New York is not falling apart. New York New York had more people leave than any place in the United States A in the last year. A lot of people year. leave Florida too. I read okay, a story about it the, the most other day. left New York the most, according to the U.S. Census. In, in the entire country, <laughs> everyone's scared and Rents running away. High. And the most, <laughs> they came here, Jessica, <laughs> where it's higher. <laughs> they oh, came. That was a COVID thing. And right. Free and loose state. They're yeah. here. Like, our look, our bejeweled dumpster that is a spring break town is overrun with New York. Our highways can't handle it. Our schools can't handle it. They've bought up all the property. And now no one can afford to live in Miami anymore because they're fleeing New York at record numbers. I'm not making that up. That's the U.S. Census. And I'm not making this up. WFAN offered me the program director's job, and I turned it down. Not because, listen, I wanted to do it. Why would I make this up to that listener? Why would I make something like this up and put myself in an uncomfortable position with both Dan and John Skipper, which I did over the last two weeks? Because you made everything else up. Well, that's true. He, he, do you guys realize, let's think about this for a second, okay? Let's think about what Stugatz has done with his career, because I do want to uh, marvel at the Daft King, sponsored by Draft Kings. Mm-hmm. He did this very successfully in Miami, 20 years before New York. He built something here that conquered the incumbent and ruled. That job, if he had it, he would crush it if he actually wanted to work like that because he did it already 20 years ago. <laughs> Miami was doing better sports talk with his lineup than anywhere in the country. It, it was the strongest thing. Everyone will tell you that. The lineup that Stugatz put together in Miami was changing sports radio and young people flocked to it. It was Barstool then. I had people from WFAN calling me about our lineup. I had people from WFAN calling one to leave WFAN to come to 790 The Ticket because our station uh, seemed like a lot of fun from afar. WFAN would have been lucky to have Stugatz engaged, doing his dream job, trying as hard as he can in sales. They would have been fortunate to have him. (laughs) They should feel flattered that he actually considered it, because I don't think he'd consider it from another radio station anywhere in the country. Well, I told WFAN that. I told Chris Olivero that. This is the only reason, because they were confused as to why I would want to leave a hosting position with you, one of the biggest shows in the history of sports radio, to go up to WFAN, a more expensive city in New York, and work five days a week. Like, he asked me a dozen times, are you sure this is something you want to do? And my response always was, the only reason I am entertaining this is because it's WFAN. That's it. WEEI, no, WIP, I don't care about those markets, don't care about those stations. I only care about this one radio station. Stugatz did this when he was 30. When he was 30, he created the radio station that FAN now has, and he did it in a market where it was harder to do with what was going on in sports, and he toppled the incumbent, and that is the hardest thing. That was all old white dudes up and down the line, just (laughs) old white dudes castigating black dudes on the radio, and it made for great numbers, and Stugatz came in and took it away from them, so... Uh, that was uh, emotional here in our 20th uh, year anniversary year, uh, where to go through that with Stugatz, because these things don't last that long. Like no. that, we've been very fortunate. Un- like, it's unbelievable 
uh, it's honestly unbelievable. It makes no sense to me that all the other things in my career that I cared about, I would cast aside in the pursuit of this thing for it to last for 20 <laughs> years is crazy. Yeah, partnerships don't last 20 years. Like, it's a miracle that we made it this long. And so to have him come back into our bosom, lazy as ever, still smelling like heaters, uh, sloppy and wearing the same clothes on most days. Three days a week, man. Not having to work as hard as he would as a program director, 60 and 80 hours a week. We are thrilled and grateful that Stugatz, flattered even, that Stugatz would uh, continue working with us. Right. It's, it's, bro, this is a beautiful, beautiful arrangement y'all have had this whole time, bro. Like, friendships don't last this long, let alone partnerships. Y'all ain't never had a shootout. I don't know if you shot at him before or not. Like, it's so amazing and beautiful, bro. You ain't never had no it's, women it, dramas. It's, it's, a, it's, a it's a miracle that I haven't killed him. It really is. <laughs>
I can't believe this. I honestly can't believe this. Stu Gatz isn't here. He just took a call. I mean, we're in the middle of doing this. And he took a call, and he's like, WFAN is calling, buddy. They got to interview me. What? Yes. He just he's, he, he, left, he left the room, and he's now not working for us. He is working for them while being paid for us and not being paid for them. And the thing that was unstated in everything that he just did, the thing that didn't get said, is those jobs simply can't pay very much these days. Yeah. I mean, it's radio. Radio is dying. But I believe all, everything Stugatz just said, if it were one dollar more that it paid to run the New York radio station, I think I think he might go out in a blaze of glory. Like, just that start. Was, that and, was my takeaway, too. Yeah, like, yeah, it's sure. just that they didn't offer him enough yeah. money. There was not, like, a loyalty factor involved at all. It's always didn't take the money. hometown discount. But, yeah. <laughs> but him painting it as a loyalty uh, discount and allegiance to audience and our 20th anniversary, which we can't trust him to show up to. He's actually in another room right now. Do we have microphones in that room? Can we overhear him with sausage fingers? He's in mid-interview. He is talking to their morning show right now. Can we overhear what's happening in that room? Right. That sounds like a HIPAA violation, in, in my opinion. It does sound like a violation. <laughs> no, it's not, sure. yeah, no, it's not a HIPAA. violation. This is being broadcast in New York. It's broad, it's not, we're not overhearing his conversation without his knowledge. Well, yeah, we are. But he's doing, he, I just want the content that I'm paying him for. If he's doing it in New York, can we get it here? Yes or no? No, we can't do that right now. We don't have the, the engineering for that right now. I have a television studio. Why can't I do that? Can you do that, please? Roy, you're in charge today. Go do that. I want to be able to hear the interview that he is doing. We are currently efforting to get that for you right now. <laughs> I, I just looked it up. It is illegal to record a conversation in Florida unless all parties give legal no, You want the say, Santa's no, to get us? No, I, no, yes. We're breaking the law. Whoa, you're no, breaking no, no, the law. No, 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 no. I have no, no say over anything. I, I'm just a girl. I want... Lucy, I'm going to have to get, you're going to have to get stronger there. The kids stronger. I'm Is just a girl. A <laughs> that was a great time. We got it, Dan. Where is that? Okay, let's listen. Let's listen. hold on. Oh, jeez, boom. <laughs> so this is WFAM uh, currently asking him questions. He is. He is. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think we're breaking the law here. He's giving them 72 degrees on a cloud in the sky today, boobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm a point. Listen, there, there, there's a gravitas that comes with being the program director of WFAN. And to be able, like, if you told me when I got started, thank you, Boomer. Uh, if you told me when I got started, uh, hey, one day you will end up being the program director at WFAN, I think the third in, in the station's history. I would have laughed you out of the room, but uh, it was offered to me. Chris Oliveira was great. You should all take some solace in this, okay? That guy has all of your backs because Lord knows I tried to get every one of your jobs, okay? That guy, he has your back. But seriously, I would have loved to do it. Uh, the staff is great. I've been up there. I've hung out with Al. I had a, you know, I went out to the street corner with Eddie Scazzeri. I had a cigarette. He watched me smoke a cigarette. Uh, I really, really wanted to do it. Strange negotiating uh, But in tactic. the end, we just couldn't, uh, we just couldn't work it. There were too gross. many, there were too many hurdles to clear. We just couldn't clear them all. You feel gross, Juju? Yes, this is disgusting. And illegal. <laughs> Come get it, DeSantis. <laughs> I dare you. He was in reruns a little bit on that material. He sharpened it up over here, and then he took it to them. It was, you know, now, now we might get to the good stuff. Right. <laughs> or you could just laugh the He's entire time. He's given them all well, the well, good stuff. Well, boom, Booms, I'll tell you this. Like, Gio was telling me the first day Spike was there, and he didn't show up at 5 a.m., and you said on the microphone, well, turnoff would have been here. Like, listen, Boomer, i got to be honest with you. Had I taken the job, I am lazy, and had I taken the job, there's no way I would show it up at 5 a.m. to meet with you guys before your show. I mean, you got 12 shares. What do you need my input? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. At least he gave it to us first. <laughs> he seems happy. He does seem way happier on the phone with them than he does with us. <laughs> I mean, look at him. Smile on his face. 
It's his dream job. It, he got so close to his dream job. Imagine being passed over for a job for by two guys. <laughs> <laughs> and hearing they, about it on the radio. Whoever they name the program director is going to be like, oh, come on. I wasn't your first choice? Him? He basically called them poor. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, you know, I don't care. I mean, if they do, they do. If they don't, they don't. Like, listen, I just did, you know, a half hour with Levitar, and I told him all about it. So he is well aware of it. And then as we go to break, I said, Dan, I got to go. He said, what do you mean we're doing a show? I said, I got more important things to do. Boomer and Geo asked me to call it. Incredible. And so. <laughs> That's how it happened. Yeah. Listen, I promised Oliveira, who called me 17 times a day to, to, to see if I was leveraging the situation. I promised him I was not. Uh, the great thing is I got to know Chris very well. He loves that station. He loves you guys. He loves everyone in the lineup. Uh, and he's great. He and I have a great uh, relationship. And our hope is that one day down the road we'll be able to clear some hurdles and figure something out. What? Oh, what, what? Wait, what? Uh, Hold on a second. Maybe down the road, because for huh. me that would be the perfect ending. Uh, to my career. Juju, I'm not going to do this into my it, 60s. I, and here's another funny part, uh, Boomer. You'll love this. Gio, who blew up my vacation on a Friday, okay? And just I'm on vacation, and all of a sudden, I'm getting call after call, text after text from Neil Best and Ryan Glassbeagle. I mean, I needed that like I need a hole in my head. <laughs> Gio was ranting about it. I, and then I got a friend calling me, and he got, this is the best. And he doesn't ask me about what Gio said about me as the program director. He said, why is Gio so upset at Peter Alonso for going to a concert? <laughs> Peter Alonso. Okay. Peter Alonso, that's Gio's fine. Gio's up there for 90 home runs. I feel like this is what happened to Rachel Nichols. <laughs> uh, but we, listen, it was, it was, uh, it was super flattering. Uh, and hopefully I'll, uh, I'll get there at some point. So, uh. Listen, I just wanted to hang out with Eddie Scazzari. Let's get right down to it. Okay? All right, oh, all right. Is. Let's uh, let's cut out of this here. We've just broken uh, a law here uh, with uh, without Stugatz knowing we were listening in on that conversation. We'll see how he comes back. We will review that conversation with him. Uh, I need it like I need a hole in the head. That is an expression only said by someone over fifty. Correct. correct. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, yeah. It is. Like, uh, I don't understand that expression. Like, well, none of us obviously need a hole in our heads, but um, he, would, he was going to come and do WFAN, and he was going to ransack the place. And what I wanted to ask you, Juju, is, is it strange that after, I'm, I'm 55 years old, I'm an adult, I'm formed, uh, I, I have enjoyed my career. I am wounded, emotional, hurt right now in front of everybody, in front of America, shamed, watching my partner fake laugh with another man. Yeah. It's devastating. Bro, you formed, bro. <laughs> <laughs> How formed are you? Are you fully formed or are you half formed? I'm formed. I'm 55 years old. You are who you are. Like at 55 years old. You're not changing. I, no, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to try to grow. I'm going to continue to attempt to grow. But I'm just saying that most people, wouldn't you agree that most people at 55 are largely formed? Time to check my social media, y'all. We got another one. The South on YouTube says, does Dan dress like Jeremy or does Jeremy <laughs> dress like Dan? That's oh. a great question. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, We all know the point. answer. Uh, I've been dressing this way for years. Honest to God, uh, I think everyone, yes, my, my wife has been very flattered by everyone who says that I have a new stylist. My wife simply bought me like... Ten new clothes. Of, ten of these and ten shirts and told me to wear them together and that's my new style. So and it's my it style. It looks great on you as well. Salute. Just a simple change. I, I, that's it. Just for Christmas and our anniversary, I got 10 shirts and I got a couple of pairs of pants and that's I, it. Everything was much, different. Much better than them and one shorts used to wear up here every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I disagree. I, I, I preferred that for comfort, but this looks slightly more professional. You said you couldn't change, but at 55, you started dressing different. Uh, yes. And Not I, formed. You know Literally what? All it clothes. took was you getting married. Okay. I will tell you that I am not actually formed, but I would assume that most people, by the time they arrive at 55, they are resigned to, I'm only going to change so much from here. 
I'm only willing to do so much. I am who I am. I figured out after, in adulthood, I figured out what I want, who I want to be. I like what I like. I don't like what I don't like. And that's it. I mean, I can't get my father to not drive at 80. I can't pull it away from him. I am now the age my father was when he was raising me, and I took all of the imprints on from my father. I'm now older than he was when he was raising me. And he stopped growing at 55. My father stopped. You know who didn't stop growing at 55? Pat Riley. And the heat went down uh-huh. last night to the Mavericks. Somebody in here told you. Somebody said Daniel Gaffer, who's hitting 100 shots in a row right now. But I think the heat preparing for this play-in tournament, they still scare me as a Celtics fan, dog, because I do not want to see Jimmy Butler and them boys finally healthy in the first round. You feel me? I feel like we should be able to choose. Let us play the magic. You know what I mean? Let's, let's, let's get some new rules. I like the playing tournament. Juju, I can't believe that you're voicing Celtic fan fear still of this Heat team with as good as Boston's been and how obviously Miami, if Duncan Robinson isn't perfect and they don't have the exact perfect spacing, they're going to score 92 points a game and Boston can – throttle a team like that i don't know why boston would be fearing this version of the miami heat that hasn't been healthy all year and and now they try to get duncan robinson and terry rozier healthy for playing games because the whole season has been played at a pace to get miami to the playoffs so that they can get 20 games out of jimmy butler at maximum jimmy butler but you fear it because it was last year an unprecedented run like an why would you fear the probability of that happening again? It's so very unlikely for it to happen again. It is unlikely, and yet the path is potentially setting up that if the Heat can go on the road and beat either Orlando or Philadelphia in that first play-in game and end up the seven seed, to have the exact same path through the Eastern Conference of Milwaukee as a two seed, the Knicks as a three seed, and then Boston in the Eastern Conference Finals. Not that it's going to happen, but if they can get healthy and win those games... Juju. That would I be best it. for the league, right? To re to reinstate all those storylines. You want Boston to fear somebody because if I ranked them all now in the entire league, everything after Boston would come out of the West.
the industry Stugatz helped build should feel flattered that he would entertain the idea of coming back to be a power broker, <laughs> lazy and fat and comfortable. <laughs> Boomer Esiason just Thank got you. done telling okay. Stugatz that now, unfortunately, they're going to have a professional environment. <laughs> Someone's going to come in there because Stugatz... Stugat, I would assume Stugatz wouldn't be coming in all of a sudden in a tie, right? He's not going to be program director. Uh, he's not going to. I become, wasn't wearing a tie. He's yet. not going to no. become management, is he? Is that what he was going to become? No, yeah. absolutely not. Wait, he's wait. not going to show up with that, though. He's not going to show up in a hoodie. But uh, mm, I would show up. up in a hoodie. I would wear a hat. I was what? asking for a microphone at my desk. I mean, there were certain things I was asking for because I know the hosts there. They would try to get me on the show, and I'd be busy going through traffic because back-to-back -back car spots just played. And so I just said, hey, I'm going to be busy. Get the microphone, put it at my desk. That way, if the guys want to talk to me, I could just pipe in from my desk. I kind of want it's to. where the negotiation I, I, stalled. I, I am actually sort of eager uh, because I don't know if Lucy, Juju, Jeremy, or Jessica have any access to the human being Stugatz was before the character that that human being belched out. <laughs> Rich off fame and cigarettes and the sound of his own voice oh, giving yeah. sports takes. Didn't matter how ill-informed they were. They sold, baby. <laughs> Stugatz kind of helped invent the revolution of sports radio in Miami, where Miami had been doing sports radio the way New York did it. And Stugatz hired a whole bunch of young people and created a radio station that was doing it different entirely than the generation of people who were doing it all over the country, where people were finding us at the advent of the Internet from all over the country because they needed to listen to this thing in Miami that, uh, that felt like a lineup from top to bottom. Not all these disjointed things. See, this is what the fan has, and it's one of the few things that still carry over in sports radio intimacy that matter. The fan, all the shows feel connected. Yes. All of them, the personalities know each other. They bicker between each other. You heard something at night. Did you hear what they said about the guys in the morning? And then the whole thing's connected. Stugatz did that in Miami and toppled a giant. Not just the incumbent, a giant. The only thing in this city that had ever mattered, Stugatz took it down inside of five years. I was working there. I said to myself, there has to be, because at this stage, uh, back in like two thousand, early 2000s, uh, you saw multiple sports radio stations popping up in major markets. So we had one. I was working there. It was old. It was being all the shows sounded the same. There was no connection. And I remember thinking to myself, there has to be a younger, hipper, cooler way of doing this in Miami. And so Dan is right. Thank you, Dan, because I got Dan and we got Boog and we got Sedano and Sid Rosenberg. We also had Joe Rose. <laughs> I needed the big dog, though. The big dog, 6 in the morning, 6 to 10 a.m. every morning, I needed the billing. I needed the big dog. The B in big dog stands for billing. That's what it stands for. And even before that, John Shambi cross-talking with you, midday to afternoon. And John Shambi right now is doing very well covering the Cubs Oh, no, but right wait now. a minute. Not, the voice of no, the Cubs. No, no, but is not, that the same no. person as Boog Shambi? Yeah, that's Boog yes. Shambi, yes. Okay. Yeah. Not, uh, not very well. No, this is one of the great, great blessings, Stugatz. I don't know how people measure success in this business entirely, but one of the great blessings that I have seen in my career are people who I'm happiest for because they've arrived at something. And I felt these feelings stir on me over the last two weeks with Stugatz is that Boog Shambi has exactly the dream job that he's wanted to have all of his entire life as the voice for the Chicago Cubs. Like yep. He is at the perfect job for himself, the one that he sacrificed the entire of his life in pursuit of through the minor leagues and everything else. And so basically at the end, you get to craft your own ending with the greatest of jobs. That's what Stugatz is looking around at at 50. He hasn't done a lot of introspection in his life, but now the kids are out of the house. Like the kids <laughs> Kids are out of the house and like, what's my life going to look like? Oh, hey, wow, that was weird during the pandemic. Let's bury my mother and just skip right past it. Let's just skip right past it because we got to hurry up and, and now we got to take care of dad. And what does he want to do with the kids? He's fall Stugatz comes in here broken every week. His back hurts every week because he's flying all over the place chasing <laughs> his daughter and championship lacrosse. National champion daughter. Doing that from New York, I could see how tempting that would be. Doing it, having all of that be closer 
to where his life was. I, I do. I hope uh, New York radio is flattered that someone who helped shape and shake this industry was willing con to consider it at 50. But he didn't want to work that hard. No. <laughs> well, that hard for that amount of money, really. I mean. <laughs> That's the thing. I do. I do wonder, man, what how they could have gotten him there. And then I like to think about what would happen next because he would absolutely knock people out of their jobs. Right. It yeah. would be messy. It would be bloody. He'd be like breathing over your shoulders. It'd be like executive producing the show with Mike snorting on your back. I've matured a lot, Dan. And so there was a night uh, throughout this process where I'm up late on my computer and I'm trying to dig up dirt on all the FAN hosts. <laughs> And I realized it was right then and there that I should call Chris Olivero the next morning and tell him, listen, I'm going to pass. <laughs> <laughs> That's top five where... hosts you want to fire? I mean, your, none of them have yourself. ever been arrested. And nothing. Not I, I, I couldn't find any them. dirt. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm sitting there at two in the morning. What am I doing here? I'm trying to dig up dirt on, uh, dirt on Giannotti and Sal Licata. Like, yeah. what, what is the matter with me? I mean, yeah. so Licata's number one. No, no, no. Sal's doing great in the middays. Dig up dirt. I mean, what happened? Didn't, didn't they have a guy? Is the FAN is Carton, isn't it? Like that's uh, and then he well, time is then Carton. Right. Okay. So right. But Carton just got a promotion. That's what he got for if the the dirt you dig up. Right. I would have been the third sketchiest person to ever work at that <laughs> radio station. <laughs> <laughs> What were the uh, what were the times that made you most lightheaded? Because I do re I really do believe that this was sort of I'm not going to say midlife crisis because he's 50, but when you're checking in on your mortality and people around you that you care about are dying and you're sending your kids off to school and you have to decide what you want to do with the rest of your life, like even these dream jobs, you, they're they'll wear you out. Like I'm I'm not sure Stugat still has to work. Um, I do. Yeah, he's, he's got a house to pay for. Well, no, but when you guys got college what, to pay for. No, but when you guys talk about Stugatz winning the lottery and not showing up the next day, I believe he needs an element of this. I don't believe he would just be on an island somewhere. I believe it's a part of his identity that he's proud of. Like, why would he just discard that thing and stop working? I don't Time think he would. Time to check my <laughs> social media. Yeah. Time to check it again. Uh, let's see who writes this in. They didn't uh, put the name on this one, but someone wants to remind everybody that Billy <laughs> called the Marlins' epic win against Baseball. the New York Yankees yesterday. He did. Wow! So yes. to the Duke. Yep. Uh, he did get the bet correct. He said Marlins plus one and a half. And when I asked him to be better on behalf of DraftKings by giving good baseball information, his analysis was the Marlins will win because baseball. And he was totally right. Yes, he by the was. way, Jake Berger three-run homer on his birthday. He has 15 RBIs. That's 41% of the Marlins' RBIs this season. And Aaron Judge flies out the center with the bases loaded. Hmm. Yeah. The end of the game. It's early. Ryan Weathers, huh? They got something there. Just four and a half back in the wild card. Hey, hey we're gaining on them. <laughs> Getting healthy at the right time. <laughs> Two and 11. <laughs> Ryan Weathers, I had a very hard time watching him last year. He's another one of these people who throws 99 miles an hour, and I don't understand how everyone keeps hitting it over the fence because he's always behind in the count. Like, I don't. Not last night, though. No, no. I know. They expect a great deal from him. But uh, that what's been interesting about that sport so far this season is you're counting on Ryan Weathers, you're 2-11, and 11 because all of your pitchers have broken down because it's unnatural to throw a baseball 100 miles an hour for an entire season. Yeah, that's right. That's what's happened to the sport. <laughs> They're missing four it's, of their best that, starting that's pitchers. That's correct. The, the Marlins. The Rays saw it a while ago. Baseball mm. is dead in this town, and another season, Billy's season, has been ruined right off the bat so quickly that the manager a week in is negotiating, hey, how quick can you get me the hell out of here? <laughs> Like a weekend, it's like, can I get like this? Yes, I understand that I'm in the middle of a burning dumpster. Can you get me out of here? I'm the manager of the year. Did you see what I did with that shit last year? <laughs> and, and so now he wants out. They had the most successful, most powerful woman executive in the history of baseball. Made the playoffs with her. She's like, I don't want to work here. These are visionaries, these people. They come here, they do their job well, and they look, oh, my God, the whole thing's rancid. Get me out of here. <laughs> like the, the whole, th like organizationally, what, Jeremy, you're shaking your head. You're going to homer on the Marlins? No, I mean, 
there's information and then there's Homer, right? So like David positioned it yesterday as if Skip decided, I don't like Peter Bendix, I want out. It's not what happened. He had a great relationship with Kim, and when she ultimately didn't pick up her end of her mutual option, he said, well, hold on, I'd like the the ability to be able to be a free agent at the end of this year. Everything he said publicly and privately, for that matter, has been positive about Peter Bendix. The thing with Kim is that Kim was not doing a great job running the minor league part of the organization. And so the Marlins were trying to figure out how to fix the front office around her to be able to run that part better while she was making really good trades at the major league level. She was great at the job in terms of making trades at the major league level, but there were weaknesses within her job. That doesn't mean they should have they're let minor, her go. She mi- should have been they're, built they're, around they're, as a, a part look, of the organization. Look, their minor leagues were torn asunder – by all that Jeter did poorly while he Correct. was here. Okay. And she suffered in one year and got to the playoffs with what she had in a position that David Sampson called eyewash, saying that the other people were running the organization and these are the Marlins promoting a woman because this is the time to promote a woman. Right. And he was wrong about that. What ends up happening is that she has the success of that, does her job well doesn't want to be here anymore, hard stop. Skip Schumacher comes here, wants to be here, does his job well, doesn't want to be here anymore because organizationally there are some fractures here that create wild instability that people don't trust. Why would you trust organizationally anything from the history of this franchise? Before Skip Schumacher, the Marlins had one of the longest tenured managers in baseball and Don Mattingly, and Kim did want to be here she just didn't want to take a demotion in her power and her view of bringing in peter bendix as president of baseball operations to run the minor leagues was that she wouldn't still have the full power at but the major now, league level which now, reports have suggested wasn't necessarily now the case. a new savior comes to town a raise person and the season is done before it gets started beat the yanks no sandy no yuri no brax it's a nightmare but yes billy got it right <laughs> Yesterday, the 1 in 10 Marlins yes. were playing the 10 and 1 Yankees in New York. Not today, Dan. I mean. And Billy giving you gambling advice on behalf of DraftKings that allows us to have the best deal in sports media gave you the explanation that he would bet Marlins over Yankees plus run and a half. You had it the whole game. Why, Billy? Because baseball.